You reach down, you flip the tortoise over on its back, Leon. Do you make up these questions, Mr. Holden? Do they write them down for you? The tortoise lays on its back, its belly baking in the hot sun, beating its legs, trying to turn itself over, but it can't. Not without your help. But you're not helping. What do you mean, I'm not helping? I mean, you're not helping. Why is that, Leon? Hey everybody, I thought I'd just do a quick video um, on a project that I'm going to be starting to work on alongside everything else I'm doing. Um, I really enjoyed painting that bust a while ago that I did, um, that was the Roman soldier, I think it was Pegasus Models, I think it was called, and then also I did that, um, that uh, French Indian War Iroquois miniature, who wasn't a bust, but it was a large, larger scale miniature, I believe it was 50 something maybe 55 millimeter, I'm not sure, something like that. But now that I've got the 3D printer, um, I was thinking I'd like to test out the resin printer and its capabilities of making a bust that I would like. And for those of you, that's all over the intro. This is um, Leon, I believe, uh, from Blade Runner, one of the replicants and uh, original Blade Runner movie. And um, yeah, I really liked the look of this. There is one also of Deckard, you know, the main character, but for whatever reason I was drawn <laughs> to do one of the bad guys. And um, I actually, Harrison Ford is a huge, huge name, but, uh, and I probably will do that one at one point, but I like this this actor, um, and um, he's in, and it was in a lot of movies, um, in the 80s in particular. Passed away um, quite a while ago. I actually was a little sad to, to see that. I, I'd looked him up recently when looking into doing this project and realized that he'd, he'd been somebody that passed away. And um, he, last name was James, um, and he uh, was in another 48 Hours, I believe, it was another movie he was in. He was um, also in Enemy Mine. Um, which is a movie that I like, very nostalgic from the 80s. He was, played a bad guy, the people that everybody loved to hate. This was one of his most famous roles in Blade Runner. And so I thought this was a very cool, this is a very cool scene that he was in. But I wanted to show how my, um, my printer could handle a sculpture like this, show some of maybe the um, little defects that I've noticed. Uh, it is, you know, a resin model, and even when I get resin models, you know, from small scale manufacturers and things like that, there would be lots of flash and things that I'd have to deal with. Um, and uh, this would be in some ways no different, except for the fact that in some ways I think this came out better in, in, in certain respects. If you don't want to cut off huge chunks of flash <laughs> from um, those processes, uh, there's just some little things I'll show here. Before I kind of show some of the imperfections, I kind of show just how good I actually think this is. Um, first, I'll just do a little bit of a spin around here so you can just see it at this distance. Um, just to let you know, I'm planning on experimenting with oil paints. Ex I'd say exclusively, but I am going to um, cover them first with an acrylic base layer and then do everything with oils after that. Um, that's something that's going to be completely new for me to utilize oils that much. Um, and so I'll talk about that in another video, my uh, starting to use oil paints for some projects like this. Inspired by um, Vic from Vic's Miniatures, Victor. Um, cause he, I've seen him doing that and I've been kind of envious of trying that for a long time. So he's inspired me to eventually finally do this. <clears throat> um, I'm just going to show this a little bit more up close. The face is where by far the lar largest concentration of detail is. I printed this at, I believe it's 0.025 millimeters instead of the, my normal 0 
So it took double the amount of time because it actually had double the amount of layers which then smooths it out further because the the distance between the layers I suppose is that much less so you can see that there this has captured some really nice detail I'm in fairly close and I don't think the layers are overly apparent I am planning on trying to use a gesso product to prime and in particular I'm using a black gesso because I'm not worried about having to cover the black with oil because oils are really transparent and you're supposed to start out very thin and it's very hard to get coverage over a dark color sometimes um, but we're going to talk about that in another video I'm going to get feedback from people that watch the channel that work with oils a lot and kind of just talk a little bit about what I've been researching I'm going to go into another stage here just to show this up close again I hope that you guys can appreciate some of the detail on this, achieved on this. I think the design's really, really nice. I did pay a few bucks for this. It wasn't that expensive, but I did, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> choose to pay in order to do this project. But it was fairly minimal. Um, so maybe you can appreciate, I think, how um, it's not bad for something that you do at your house and really nice design. I think it's actually really quite nice. Now, um, I did have to print, I did use supports, particularly on the bottom of this model, um, in order to be able to uh, print this. And there were only like a couple of really small supports on the ears that went down, but you can see right here on the chest, now, I've sanded um, a couple of spots where there were supports, but if you look really close here, if you can see this blemish there, these two dots, those were where two supports came up from. I've sanded them, so to the touch, there's no definition. So that should, that should completely be covered by the gesso and the paint, and you should not see it at all. Um, but it is just a... Um, pigmentation, you know, color difference now within the smoothness there because of where the supports were. Um, so I have actually done a little bit like that. Now, you might notice here there's a bit of a line here going across. That's definitely a printing issue. I did have to, I did choose and have to refill my resin tank when printing this because it was quite a, a bit of a big sculpt and I'm not sure if that's where it happened. Um, I'm looking and I see another little line right there too. So I may try to sand that a little bit and just see if when I actually put my gesso on and, and do a couple other things whether those get covered. There, although you can see them like right here it's going across, I still think it's fairly smooth. Now these are printing lines if you can see right there those little wavy lines. They're almost like a fingerprint. That is from printing. You can't feel it. So I suspect it'll be completely covered, but we'll check because I'll, um, I can document it. So those are honestly some potential blemishes. I thought that this here, those little lines there um, in the sign were blemishes, but actually when I look at the they're actually, I think they're part of the design, actually some rib, ribbing that goes this way on that to show motion maybe. Um, and so I sanded them a little bit, but they're still kind of there. And I think that that was meant to be part of it because I actually looked at the design it, it seemed to show it in the design. But, um, you know, some of this stuff, I'm just going to show the ear here. Some of this stuff is really thin and quite delicate. Um, It's really impressive, I think.
One thing that's really cool, um, I think, of the eyes. Yeah, show these already, but he is sort of looking slightly down, but yeah, it seems very cool. So um, that's it. I just wanted to show a little. I just thought this would be a cool thing that people might be interested in seeing. Something that you can achieve. This is with the Elegoo Mars Pro Two, um, and uh, we'll show this at another point as I make some progress on this. I'm going to do another video talking about my adventure into using oil paints beyond just an oil wash, which I have used oil washes and used a little, a little bit, just dabbled, you know, as a miniature painter, but never as my primary with this. You might you might ask too why I'm going to use acrylic first and. Initially, I'm a bit of a purist, and I kind of thought, well, no, I'm just going to go all oil. You know, it's all or nothing, and, you know, it just... But I, I've been watching some stuff, and um, I'm being a little realistic in that I think maybe in order to get the kind of results I want, I should probably spend more time on f using doing my finishing, my washes, and then also finishing, like, all my highlights and darkening um, and blending and mixing and trying to bring all of the... Um, beyond the base coat, like all of the extra detail. So that's a lot of painting still. I'm thinking that that's where I should spend my time in, in trying to practice rather than um, making some beginner mistakes and trying to, let's say, cover a dark primer and getting too much paint on and spending way too many weeks waiting for paint to dry as I, because oil, oil painting takes, you know, a long time to dry. Um, and so I, I thought this might be good for this one to start with. And so, yeah, interested in your guys' thoughts, what you think about the, the sculpture, just initial thoughts on using oils on a sculpture. And uh, talk to you later.